and welcome back to another episode of Senior Connections, your information and education-based resource show for seniors. I have with me today Maria from Silverthorne Adult Day Center here to talk about her program and what it means to seniors everywhere. Welcome, Maria. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me, Alyssa. Absolutely. Um, I'm really excited to talk about Silverthorne because I know it's an amazing program and you do such a phenomenal job. Thanks. Um, let's talk a little bit about your background and how you got into Adult Day. Accidentally. Ah. Um, but it was a great place to land. So I had been for many years the director of the preschool at the Boys and Girls Club in Salem. Wow. Um, and I went from there to a hospice agency and then ended up as marketing director for a um, assisted living specializing in memory care. Wow. Um, Silverthorne had a director for 25 years. Mm -hmm. um, it was never on my radar. I, I was looking to come back to the Salem area, um, but I just never expected this position to become available. Mm -hmm. And um, fortunately for me, it did. And uh, I interviewed, and they were they offered me the position, and I very happily accepted. So here I am, right back on the same street I was for almost 20 years at the Boys <laughs> and Girls Club. So wow. it's nice to be there, and it's nice to have that connection. We had the kids come over yesterday in their in their costumes um, from the Boys and Girls Club, the little preschoolers. Ah. Um, so that, it's a nice intergenerational program, and I have a lot of connections in town. So. I was going to say, working. yeah, you in Salem, I mean, working for the Boys and Girls Club, you must have made a lot of community connections, which I feel like would be really important. It is really important, but now, well, I worked with the young ones and the young families, so now my focus is obviously our senior citizens, so I've... Um, I shouldn't admit this on television that I've joined the senior center <laughs> and the women's club and the lions club um, because those are where the people that need our services um, tend to be. Right. Um, so I am out in the community a lot and do a lot with the chamber of commerce and do a lot with um, the assisted livings in town, um, the residents at Salem Woods, Greystone. Um, so we have a whole street there. We start with Greystone, then we've got Silverthorne, then we have the Senior Center, and then the residents of Salem Woods. So we take up the whole block, all <laughs> of the right. seniors. Yep, absolutely. Well, you are a very busy woman, that's for sure. Yeah. 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 Well, let's talk about uh, adult day programming. What exactly is adult day programming? Adult day programming is really like a hidden jewel. Um, mm -hmm. There's not a lot of people that know about it till almost they're almost um, past where we can help them. Um, so it's great to be on a, on a program like this where we can get the word out. Yeah. Um, so we, most of the people in our community have um, dementia. Mm -hmm. There are a few people that are there for primarily physical reasons, but even those people have even the beginning of dementia. Um, they're not safe at home anymore. Yeah. They either live with um, a spouse Mm -hmm. or adult children um, yep. that need to go to work. Yep. Um, so they come to us um, primarily because they're not safe anymore. And we are a medical program, so we can administer medications. We keep our eye on, on their health. We'll do blood pressures and um, check their sugars during the course of the day. And if there's an issue where my nurse is oftentimes on the phone with primary care um, providers, just making sure that um, you know, we keep on top of their health care, which is something they may not get at home. Right. Um, so, there's a, and they're getting um, socialization yep. that they, I was thinking about that this morning. Um, some of the people that are, are quiet, yeah. and they're still quiet. They come to the program and, and they really observe, maybe more than participate, yeah. but they're still interacting. And they come and we make a big deal of them when they come in in the morning, and when they leave, we make a big deal of them when they leave. Yeah. And you know, you'll get a smile at the end of the day, even from someone that was kind of quiet. So I know that we're really making a difference in their daily lives because for, for most of them, they'd be home sitting there by themselves watching TV primarily, so. Right, absolutely. I know every time I walk in your door, I feel that. It almost feels like um, a big Italian family. Yeah, just a little bit. Well, somebody <laughs> asked me what my job was the other day. It's like, what do you do? I'm like, 
Well, it's kind of like running a household now that you say that, you yeah. know, so we provide breakfast, lunch, and an afternoon snack, so I have to make sure that I shop and there's enough food for everybody. Yeah. You know, I have to make sure that all the supplies are there. I need to make sure that they're entertained. I, you know, we just need to keep there like, it's like having um, a group of people that you need to take care of Yeah. Um, in many ways. Wow. I didn't realize that that medical piece coincided um, so much. I knew there was medication involved. I knew there was some different things, you know, but hearing you talk about it, I think paints a very different picture of adult day health. It, it is, that's a huge piece of adult day health. So it, unfortunately, sometimes people think of it as babysitting. Mm -hmm. um, the number one thing we try to do is maintain the dignity of our participants or our guests, I'd like to call them our members. Um, yeah. So even though it is similar to daycare for children, yeah. um, in many respects, it's, it's much different. Um, but they're safe with us, and that nursing piece is huge. Yeah. Um, just for instance, we had someone yesterday um, had a bleed there on Coumadin. Yeah. There was a bleed that wouldn't stop. Yeah. Um, had she been home by herself, it may have been, um, the end result may not quite have been what it was yesterday. Yeah. You know, so we had to call 911, the EMTs came in, everything's fine, she's back today. Um, but it, been, it may have been quite a different story if she wasn't with us for the day. So Absolutely. that's a huge piece yeah. of what we do. Yep. Well, let's talk about the members that you have and your families. Can you tell me the type of families and the type of members you have that you provide the service for? Sure. Most, most of our families either come from the Salem or Greater Salem area mm -hmm. or they work in town. Um, so it's convenient for people um, to get here, um, get to us. Yeah. Um, and we are the only adult day in there. The next closest is um, Hampstead and then we kind of go to Sarah's Manchester. Yep, okay. You know, in north, north and west. So yep. within about 10 or 15 miles, we are the only, the closest one. Yep. Um, so, like I said, most of our families are from Salem, some are from Wyndham, some are from Pelham. I don't think I have anyone from Hudson right now. Um, but it, you don't have to be a Salem resident to come to our program. Okay. It just needs to be convenient for you. Right. Um, so, and like I said, a lot of our families live with adult children that are still working, and then about half of them live with their spouses. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the services that we provide to, the, to help those older family members mm -hmm. um, navigate this very complicated system of yes. adult senior care. Um, yes. You know, I recommend people call ServiceLink all the time um, if they need to go um, get Medicare or Medicaid or if they need any other services. Yep. Um, the goal for most of our families is to keep their loved one at home. Um, but sometimes those behaviors, um, especially with the diagnosis of dementia or any, other, or any dementia, particularly Alzheimer's, um, Sometimes the behaviors are just too much for their loved ones to, to keep them at home, even if they come to us during the day. Yeah. Um, so we help them with other services. Um, we help them try to find um, a, a long-term care bed. Yeah. Some of our participants have gone to um, assisted livings that have memory care communities yeah. like We've the residents. We've a couple. Yep, you do have. And, and yeah. they, because they like, to be, they like to stay on the same street. Right, <laughs> exactly. Or just down the street. Right. Um, and luckily, people in Salem in this general area have quite a few choices as far as wonderful assisted livings that they can yes. take advantage of. However, as you know, those are all private pay. Right. So where the struggle is right now is for those that have limited funds um, to find beds for um, especially the people that I have during, during the course of the week um, because some of the nursing homes are not equipped to take them unless they have a locked unit. Um, a lot of the rehabs are not even equipped to handle some of our, um, some of our members. Yeah. Um, and that for me is the biggest issue right now. I know the state is um, asking people their opinions. They're having um, for the next month or two, there are quite a few um, like town halls yep. being held um, down here in southern New Hampshire. 
um, asking people, you know, what do they need? What do the seniors need in Salem? Um, and that's what I need. I need to be able to find a place that will, if they need to go further than what, you know, need more than we can give them, I need to be able to help them find those places. And right now it's really difficult. Yes, absolutely. I think just navigating, you know, senior life, senior care, health care in general is really hard. But then when you're put between a rock and a hard place or put in a, a complicated situation, um, you really start to see how limited your resources are and you find yourself scrambling to find a way to remedy the situation. Absolutely. And there's a lot of people that are on their own trying to navigate the system. Yes. Um, so, I mean, I really feel it's part of our responsibility to at least help guide them. Yeah. Like I said, I, I oftentimes refer people to ServiceLink because they are a great resource. Um, but before they even get there, I can, you know, I can mention hospice care. I can, you know, we try yep. to hook our, our residents up with the, um, the VA. Yep. Um, a lot of them don't know that they're eligible for VA services. We have a great um, connection at the VA, yep. and our nurse has a very good relationship with her. So we're, she's really good at getting them the services they need, both of them. Um, so that is really helpful. Um, like we said, hospice, palliative care. I mean, there are so many avenues out there for them. Um, yep. that, and when you're in a crisis situation, you oftentimes um, don't have that information and you really right. need someone to help you navigate this system. Absolutely. That's the whole goal of the show is to have people like you on, people like Connie from ServiceLink, yep. um, to really come on and share what they know and to be able to be a resource and let people know that we're here to help. Mm -hmm. You know, we can help guide you through it. We can share this information and, and get through it together. You know, people often call, often call um, looking for a place for their loved one. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not the right place, I will recommend that they go somewhere else. Like I said, most of our people have a memory care. Yep. They need memory care. They have their memory is compromised a little bit. So if they call and they have somebody that's just a little bit has a physical impairment and they just need a little bit of help, perhaps Silverthorne may not be the best place for them. Right. Um, so then then we have a wonderful senior center in town. So it's like, well, maybe try that first as a first step. Right. You know. And then if they if they come to me and they stay with me for a little while and they need a little bit more, it's like, okay, well, maybe you want to bring some in-home care, mm -hmm. or maybe you want to think about assisted living, or maybe you want to think of something long-term. Um, and, and every situation is different. Every person with dementia, the, the disease manifests itself differently in everybody. Yes. So it really is, they're all very individual cases um, and different solutions for everybody. Yes, absolutely. Now, something I do want to talk about is where does the funding come for your program? Obviously, your program is needed. Um, where does all that money come from? Well, as you know, Alyssa, we are a nonprofit. Yes. Um, so our funding, it's, the program is paid for in a couple of different ways. Like I said, we have a good relationship with the VA. If you're eligible for VA benefits, um, typically the VA will cover two days. Um, which is a, a great help to many people. Yep. Um, we do accept Medicaid, um, yep. and that's also a great resource for people. Um, we accept um, long some. We accept long-term care. Not all long-term care right. insurance will cover it, so right. it's up to the individual plan. But exactly. we do accept that. Right. There are some stipulations listed within the plan where it will cover adult day, which is huge for people. Mm -hmm. And we also have um, private pay. Mm. We, also, we don't have a minimum on the number of days, so if you could only afford to come one day a week, um, that's fine. We're not going to turn you away. Mm -hmm. um, but I, also, I have a few other resources as far as um, helping, trying to help them find some financial assistance. Yep. assistance. Um, I always refer again to ServiceLink. There is a caregiver grant program that they offer, so that's the first thing I ask them to do is call yep. there. Um, the county is also, they closed their, their adult day program last, last year, I think it was last year. Um, so they freed up the money um, that they were putting towards their adult day and they have distributed it among the, the other adult days in Rockingham County. Yep. So I can ask on an individual basis if there's a need um, for something there. Um, I have um, Patty Drellick who has been in Salem working with the senior population for many, many years, yep. has um, 
she just called me the other day about in, in I was concerned that there's some people that she knows um, that could really use the service but can't afford it. So she's trying to help us raise some money. Yep. Um, I was at a grant writing class this morning. So uh, my goal is to raise enough money that we could have a sliding scale right. um, for anybody that wants to come in. So uh, if there is a, if, if finances are an issue, um, we really try hard to find something to make it so they can come at least one day. Right. Um, but it, it will always, that will be an issue and I have to continue to fundraise. Um, one of the ways we did that was our fashion show we had yeah. last year. Yeah. Um, so that we had, we did fun. the fashion show. Um, we, I have uh, people in the community um, often help. The women's club is very, very helpful. Yeah. Um, right now they are redecorating our activities, activity room. Mm -hmm. Um, they came in, they painted, we're painting the furniture to make it all match. Um, the, Rotary, the Rotary Club um, gave us a beautiful, um, I think it's a 60 inch TV. We had a little 32 wow. inch one and uh, our people really couldn't see it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we needed a big yeah. one. I remember when 32 inches was a big TV. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> so this one they can see. Yeah. So you know, we'll put on the old TV shows in the afternoon when, when it's time to go home and everybody's kind of had it. We'll put the TV on and watch funny cat videos or, yeah. or an old TV show. They really enjoy that. Yeah. So um, the community really helps out um, a lot as far as fundraising. And um, thankfully, we have um, gambling back in Salem. Um, so and that, <laughs> and that also helps out a bit. Yeah, that so, does make a really big difference. You know, but it is all, it's always, you know, it's always on the radar. It's always something that we need to, to focus on and, right. and to make sure we have the money that we need to to make this program the best in this area. Absolutely. Well, what I'm hoping is with you being on the show that people are going to see what you do and the lengths that you go to to make sure that you're providing the absolute best programming um, adult day you know, center for people in the greater Salem community. I mean, it's huge. So. Well, we think we have the best one. <laughs> and, well, and I think you know we have chickens. Yes. So we yes. have two chickens. Um, actually, one of the uh, participants who passed away, his wife was going to take them for the winter for me. Oh, that's um, nice. So, yeah, it's, it was yeah. a really good solution to my problem. Yeah. Um, and then we'll get them back in the spring. But the chickens have been great fun. And awesome. we have a cat and we have fish. And yeah. all of those things contribute to the program and to... Um, just making it a better day for the people that, that come there. Right. Um, you know, we try to have live music once a week. We have artists come in and, and paint yeah. with our participants. Right now, we're, um, they're making ornaments and decorating a tree. We're going to put it in the Methuen Festival of Trees. Oh, I so love that's kind that. of, yeah, that's kind of a fun activity. Yeah. So they're all handmade ornaments, and then we'll, we'll go as a group and we'll go see all the trees and we'll see ours. So it'll be fun. Yeah. That'll be a nice day. Oh, awesome. Well, the next question I was going to ask you, which you kind of talked about, is um, what goes into your program planning? How do you kind of figure out where the direction you're going to go in for the week, the month, the season? Well, you know, a lot of times, well, we want to make, I want to make sure that there's music mm -hmm. on a daily basis, whether it's, you know, um, we have the radio on, you know, during an activity or um, we have something on the TV, yep. you know, concert or something, or it's live. I mean, our first preference would be live music. Yep. And we have a lot of great people to choose from. Um, there's, that's a whole area of, that I never knew people did. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. they entertain in senior places. And some of them are great. Yeah. You know, it's really good. Yep. And, the people in the, and even if they don't talk, they're tapping their feet and they're moving. And yep. we get them up dancing. And so that's always fun. Yeah. Um, but typically, um, we start our morning off with um, the Pledge of Allegiance. And we sing God Bless America. Mm -hmm. And then um, that's after breakfast. And then we go in and do a large group activity. So we get everybody moving and doing some group exercises, maybe some chair yoga. Mm -hmm. um, then they play. They'll play volleyball or shuffleboard or bowling or, or there's a few other you know, active games just to keep mm -hmm. everybody moving and engaged. And again, if there's somebody that can't participate or doesn't want to, um, they can sit in a lounge chair and just watch what's going on and, and still be part of the group and, and interact. Um, yeah. even if they don't want to physically participate. Mm -hmm. um, and then we try to challenge them um, intellectually. So there's always some puzzles going on or there's some trivia games or um, cards. We have a group of people that like to play cards. Um, we try to take field trips uh, 
we'd like to get out a couple times a month. Um, this this month they went out and saw all of the um, scarecrows, oh, and we great. did we made scarecrows too. So oh. um, that was one of the activities. So yeah. Salem had a new. They started doing it this year. We did, so, yeah. So did yep. you guys make one? I think we did. I Katrina made one, um, an upside down scarecrow. So oh. the pumpkin head was like on the ground, and he was upside down. She's super creative. Did an awesome job. Me, I, I, I would have like a stick and like a pumpkin. And I, I had nothing that would to do. I can't take any credit for the, <laughs> for the scarecrows. Yeah, I don't have a creative bone in my body. <laughs> our uh, our um, activities director has been there for nine years, I think it is now. Um, so she can do her job with her eyes closed, backwards and forwards. And um, she's always adding new things, taking things out, trying something different. Yeah. And, um, you know, as people change, their interests change. Yeah. Um, so if something that worked, you know, one month may not work again next month with the different group of people that we have. People tend to stay about a year, probably mm -hmm. a year and a half, two, um, for the most part. Yep. Um, but there's always new people coming in and out, and, yeah. and that's always a challenge. So we need to get to know them, get to know what their likes and dislikes are, and yeah. you know what they're capable of doing. Some of we I we often paint things, so we needed a um, a little chest of drawers painted. Mm. So some of the guys sanded, painted, um, you know, and, and we tried to do manly things. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, for the men. <laughs> yeah. So, so we had one of the guys was out raking the other day. I mean, it's really simple stuff, but it, it's things that um, that they like to do that right. make them feel like they have a purpose, and that's say, our main goal. Yeah, a great sense of purpose. Yeah. I feel like it's huge for them. It's huge. What I really love hearing is that you change up your programming based on your group. You know, their likes, their dislikes, the progression of their disease, um, things like that. I think that's big because sometimes we can fall stagnant in our, you know, activities calendar yeah. and our daily it gets programming. Easy. Right, and you do the same things yeah. over and over. But what I love is when I walk into Silverthorne, I see multiple things going on and I see everybody pulled into what's happening. And that's something that I feel is rare sometimes. So we need people like that. Um, so to jump off of that, tell me a little bit about the people that you have running your programs, helping you run the Adult Day Center. What are their backgrounds, trainings? Um, I think they're all earth angels, Alyssa. Yeah. To tell you the truth, um, there are a group of people I think they have the hardest job on the planet. I mean, if you come in and see what they do on a daily basis, it's just amazing to me um, how they care for our participants, our clients. I've called them everything, <laughs> our members, um, yeah. or our guests. I really like to call them guests, but um, from physically taking care of this. Some people need help with just about everything. Um, most of our people are incontinent. Um, some of our people need to be fed. Yeah. Um, some of our people really need one-on-one -on -one for a lot of part of the day. Yeah. Um, it is difficult, and it's difficult to repeat yourself over, over and over and over again without losing your patience, and they don't lose their patience. It really is amazing. Yeah. Um, the group of women, and, and it's all women that are there, um, have been there, like I said, our uh, activities director has been there for almost a decade. Mm -hmm. um, our lead LNA has been there for not too much, almost as long as she has. Um, one of the other LNAs has, hasn't been with us that long, um, but she's been an LNA for 35 years, so she, she wow. knows her stuff. Yeah. Um, we have a PCA, and we have a volunteer who comes in two days a week who is absolutely incredible. And we have another volunteer. She's there actually. They're making lunch today. So we, and the women's club comes in. So we have all kinds of volunteers that come in and help us. Um, sometimes with the one-on-one, -on -one, um, which frees us up to do all of the other things that need to be done. Um, but they just do an incredible job. Wow. They yeah. make they make it easy for me. You, you took my words away. <laughs> I'm a bit speechless. <laughs> Well, if you come in and see what they do, it really is, it's just incredible. And I, I don't, I think just about every family um, has just 
commented on on how incredible they really are. Yeah, absolutely. The emotion that you have um, for the people that you work with, mm -hmm. for your members and for your families. And um, you get really attached. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the tough part of the job because either they move on to an assisted living or a nursing home or they pass. And that's the toughest part of this job. Right. You know. So we had that this week that we have to deal with, someone that's been with us for a long time. So yeah. that's always a tough day. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I can feel your love for all of them. And um, it makes me really happy to be able to sit here with you today and talk about that. Yeah. Um, because it's very few and far between we, we find people like you. So I find in this industry that just about everybody has a special, a special heart. You can't do this work if you don't. Agreed. Oh, no. Absolutely. Right. Well, Maria, I just want to say thank you so much for being here, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you, Alyssa. Thanks for having me. You got it. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Senior Connections. I appreciate your time, and I look forward to seeing you again for another informative episode next week.